What's up? How are we doing, everybody? Uh, another Xfinity race in the books this year. And uh, <laughs> I've already seen. Let me know out of 10, what do you think of this race? I already see a 5 out of 10 saying you need more crashes. I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I think that I would agree. Fight for sure. I'm cool with fights. Uh, but I'm going to be honest. thought it was a good race. Uh, I think that, you know, Richmond, I think overall gets overhated. It's not the greatest track by any means. Uh, it, by no means is it uh, even probably in the top 10 at the moment. But the racing itself, especially when you get on different tire strategies, gets really, really fun. And <coughs> I will say, uh, the Cup Series especially probably has the most difficulty getting that really good racing. Uh, the Xfinity Series never has had a problem with getting really good racing at Richmond. In fact, I actually kind of look forward to Richmond races for the Xfinity series. Uh, I think that, um, you know, personally, that's just where I, I roll on that side of it. Um, real quick. Thank you to Steve O for the five hour super chat saying shout out to bubble Pollard who just got interviewed in the post race show. I'm surprised they have a window for that. I thought they'd be shoehorning in. Well, they got baseball next to them. I'd be, I'd be mad if I were a fan of either of those teams, but I don't care about either of them. Um, but they just interviewed him uh, going over the window. Good for them. Uh, said, But he also said if there was ever a race uh, to remove from the schedule, it's one of the Richmond races. Don't see Cup race being different. Uh, again, I didn't think it was awful. I really didn't. I thought it, it, I thought it was good for the most part. I think the ending might have got drawn out, but that's normal for short tracks. Uh, Size Super Sonic for the 435. I see what you did there. Hi, Jared. Six out of 10 race. Love five. Creed one. Yeah. Um, oh, baseball delayed by weather. There's no other game they can cut to? <laughs> you could see, I uh, outside of my teams, I give zero shits about what other baseball teams and fans go through um but i do care what you nascar fans go through and let's talk about the 2024 toyota care 250 uh this race was 250 laps long for two hours 20 minutes and 59 seconds 14 lead changes among seven leaders six cautions on the day chandler smith your winner today by about four and a half seconds over Eric Almirola. And a one, two, three finish for Joe Gibbs Racing. One, two, three, four for Toyota as Taylor Gray with a really good third place run today in that number 19 Toyota. He beats out Corey Heim at the end, but still, again, one, two, three, four for the Toyotas. The other. Five on the lead lap. Top nine were on the lead lap were Jesse Love in fifth in the Chevrolet. Bubba Pollard, good run for him. Uh, ran probably in the teens, I'd say, for most of the day. Uh, but I think team made the right strategy. He was patient. And for your first start in the Xfinity Series, I don't care if you're JGR, uh, JRM. I don't care who you are. A uh, sixth place run is really good. I mean, he's... He ran about as well as Dale Jr. runs in that car. And I don't think Dale Jr. is washed by any means when it comes to Xfinity Series racing. Parker Kligerman, 7th. 8th is Austin Hill. ninth Sammy Smith. Those are your lead lap finishers, only 9 of which finished lead lap. Cole Custer rounds out the top 10. Top forward of the day in the 10th position. Uh, so again, solid runs we saw there. After that, you got Justin Allgaier in 11th, Josh Williams in 12th. He didn't get wrecked today. Uh, Riley Herbst in 13th, A.J. Allmendinger, 14th, and Shane Van Gisbergen in 15th. 16th is Parker Retzlaff, Kyle Weatherman in 17th. Matt Benedetto stayed out of the spotlight, though, based on the last couple times he's been, probably a good thing. 18th place finish, solid run for him today. Josh Balicki in 19th, Honeyman, 20th, one lap down. Smithley comes home 21st, Bearden 22nd, Kyle Sieg 23rd, and 24th is Jeremy Clements. Last driver one lap down. After that, a couple more there. Two laps down are Dawson Cram in 25th, Jeb Burton in 26th, Ryan Ellis 27th, and Brennan Poole, Anthony Alfredo 28th and 29th. 
ninth. Four laps down for Sam Mayer. Terrible, no good season with very bad luck. Continues for him in a 30th position. Uh, unfortunately, due to losing power right at the end, Haley Deegan, 31st out of this race with a DNF. Uh, she was running in the mid-20s, but still, again, getting that seat time in, she wasn't crashed. And I think that's what matters at this point when it comes to Haley Deegan's progression as a driver. Um, so unfortunate end to her race. 30 laps down for Ryan Sieg in 32nd. Blaine Perkins, 69. Nice laps down in 33rd. And the rest of these guys, kind of a race of attrition out of this race. We'll talk about Joey Gase in a little bit. I have plenty to say about Joey Gase and the bumper throw, uh, but he comes home 34th. Sheldon Creed comes home 35th. Patrick Emerling, 36th. Brandon Jones, 37th. And unfortunately, Ryan Vargas will come home 38th and last. That 32 truck, just no good luck whatsoever when it comes to, to what happened. Car. I mean, it's basically a truck. It runs so damn slow. Um, but just no good luck whatsoever. And he, again, comes home in the final position. Last 38th. Again, not very good. 69th start. Not very nice for Ryan Vargas. Um, but, yeah, that concludes how the field will run. I am going to roll the finishing order up top here. Uh, so there you go. Results will be up here. If I got any wrong, I know you'll let me know. I appreciate it. Um, but let's get on into this race. Uh, let's see what we got. First off, thank you to Napa Racing Fan 927 for the two-hour super chat. Pollard to Iowa with the corn cob. Make it happen, JRM. Poor mayor. I agree. I, I agree with the mayor sentiment. Dude just can't catch a break. Uh, as for Pollard coming to Iowa, listen, if they got the ability and the funding and all that, hell Yes, bring him to Iowa. I think he'd be really, really good there. Um, oh, there's uh, there's Ryan. How's it going, man? I, well, aside from the obvious, you won last car, yeah, but at least it was a 69 start. I thought that's, I when I heard that, I thought it was pretty nice. Um, but still, good to see you in the chat today, Ryan. Um, man. We need to we need to get you on the show sometime soon. I'll uh I'll write that down right now and make sure you do. Uh but let's get into the race. Let's get into the race itself. Parker Retzlaff gets the pole uh in that 31 start 69 and a one last car. How emotional. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that you got a good sense of humor about it, man. Uh, I can't wait to see what you do in Europe too. Follow Ryan if you haven't already. Um, he's going to be racing in the Euro series this year. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch and we'll keep track. And again, we'll get, we'll definitely have to get Ryan on the podcast to talk about it as well. So thanks for coming on in, man. I appreciate it. Um, as I know, let's look on into the race here. Uh, Parker Retzlaff, of course, gets the pole. He would lead the first lap again, Richmond, very racy track. I think it gets overhated personally. I really do. Uh because the racing, especially in the first two stages, was really good. I think again when the field just gets spread out. If you put the all if you had like a full field of cup drivers in the Xfinity cars, I think you'd have a banger of a race. Uh and I think if you fix the cup cars up, you're not gonna get the Richmond you had in the two thousands, but I, I really think that you're gonna get a much better race and I guess perception than people give it now. Uh of course, that first caution did come out with Ryan's car smoking and on fire. Uh, luckily, again, he's all right. He was in the chat here a moment ago. Uh, we restart again with Retzlaff and Allgaier up front. Custer tried three wide. And I'll say this. Custer uh, had a very racy car early on, but Allgaier would nab the lead. Again, I think this is him being a veteran, being up front, being able to, to kind of pull those fast moves on these younger guys and more inexperienced drivers. Uh, and so he gets the lead, but then the caution comes out again. We got a spin for Brandon Jones. He has fluid coming out of his car. Uh, Sieg spins behind him and gets in the wall. Those two guys' day were just completely ruined by by all that happened there with that. Uh, bad luck again for Brandon Jones. There's no other way to put it. The, the guy might not have been running up front, but it was too early in the race to gauge whether or not he would have been up there at the end. Uh you know, I mean, even Eric Almarola wasn't running in the top three until 
uh, you know, about that point. And so you really didn't get the full scope. Uh, but just again, bad luck for the nine car. Um, and, and, and again, he might have run 20th all day, but we just we won't know because it was so early on. Um, we go back racing on lap 57, the restart between Heim and Allgaier. And, uh, well, <laughs> it really didn't last long. Allgaier led over Amarola for a little bit until Amarola took the lead. The big story at this point was Brennan Poole. Uh, co-host of Power Hour with my buddy Eric Estep, uh, which, by the way, NASCAR Wiku podcast on Eric's channel, uh, so be sure to tune on into that. Uh, but Brennan Poole was the only one to take tires on that caution period. He flies up, and by the end of stage one, uh, he comes second only to Eric Almarola. Poole, again, second. Third was Heim. Then Allgaier, Herbst, Mayer, Chandler Smith, Cole Custer, Taylor Gray, and Sammy Smith. Uh, I mean, I think he has maybe two, three more laps at least. Uh, then he is the leader in winning that stage. He just ran out of time, got caught up in traffic. Uh, but great, great stage points for Brennan Poole. And looking at the final results of the race... Uh, Brennan came home 28th, but you know, with those nine stage points, that's the equivalent of just a straight up 19th place finish, which for that team is not bad points at all. Uh, so I, that's a huge boost that that team needed. We go into stage two, uh, and at that point we have Almarola versus Allgaier and Almarola blasts off Jimmy Neutron style. Flies out in front of the field, completely snookers Justin Allgaier, who had been rolling the top. And that's how he had been fighting for and getting the lead on a lot of those restarts. Uh, but you got somebody who has as much, if not more, experience than Allgaier and has been really, really good. Yeah, got a blast, uh, but been racing really good in his career at Richmond. And Eric Almarola, again, just puts the moves on him and flies away. Uh at that point, we only go maybe, I'd say, 10, 12 laps until Logan Bearden spins, brings out the yellow again at about lap 100. This time, it's uh, Almirola versus Herbst. Again, Al Almirola leads. Uh, Kligerman had hit the wall, but the real story on this restart that had really, really sort of taken off uh, was Sheldon Creed. His car had been smoking. It smoked so much that NASCAR actually elected to park him, uh, and that would be it for him on the day. And ending out the stage, it'd be Almirola Mayer. Sam Mayer had been running top five a good part of that day. Uh, then you got Chandler Smith. His car is starting to come on really well towards the end. Taylor Gray, Corey Heim, then Allgaier, Austin Hill, Retzlaff, Custer, and uh, Bearden. Had actually come up because he had those fresher tires having to change him after a spin. He had uh, come up and got a top 10 in the stage. So good run uh, through the day for him too. Again, that's something that Richmond I think offers that a lot of people overlook is that when you switch up that tire strategy, when you're able to um, you know, make different strategic moves, you can have really, really cool things and, and uh, almost flip strategies and races on a dime like that. I'm not wanting to sit here and be a Richmond stan. Again, I think it, as a track, it's in the middle for NASCAR. But but acting like this track is anywhere near a Texas Motor Speedway, or I'd even say as bad as a Phoenix, I think that's overblowing it. Um, but we now get into the final stage, and this is where the headline comes up. So let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, starting out in the stage, we got Albert Marola versus Mayer. Mayer, though, had a tire rub. He had made contact on pit road uh, and ultimately gets a flat, goes four laps down. Day is ruined from that. Uh, the big pass of the day is on lap 163. Chandler Smith passes Eric Almarola for the lead and pretty much never looks back at all. Uh, and now we get to... The funniest part of the day. Before we get to that, though, be sure to like the stream up. Let's get to over 100 likes. And also, uh, we started this stream about 80 away. We 
currently are 73 away from hitting 75k so if you're new subscribe to the channel uh so maybe we can hit 75k on easter that'd be really fun and i'd love to do it live with all of you uh so if you like it be sure to subscribe and uh I mean, this Wednesday, too, will be on Eric Eastep's channel for the podcast, which will be a lot of fun as well. But let's talk about it. 77 to go. Joey Gase crashes. It's under commercial. We don't really see much, but all we see is this totaled car. And we're like, what What the hell? Like, we, we were missing this again. Like, we're missing a caution. What? Well, at least we're side by side. At least we get to see what all's going on. Then all of a sudden, he gets out of the car with the safety crew there. And we're like, well, okay. He looks mad. He tears the bumper, the entire bumper back, just everything from the car. It's hanging off already uh, with his bare hand, so good on him, and walks down the racetrack with it. And then, all of a sudden, the four car of Dawson Cram comes into view, and he chucks it at him. And at first, I was thinking, one, that's hilarious. I love this. I want to see more stuff like this. But another thing I was thinking is, was he aiming at the windshield or the passenger window? Because if you don't know, uh, the passenger window, like this, I'll just use this as an example, right? This, you know, window is the kind of window you normally see at a race that is at a track basically like a mile or bigger. Well, I don't have it on me, but at road courses uh, and short tracks, a lot, most of them, if not all of them, you run without that passenger window. So I was thinking, was he aiming to try and get it in the window? Either way, I love it. And then he goes off in the interview too, and he's basically you know, saying how they love to wreck cars and all that. And I thought it was funny because when you listen to Dawson Cram's radio, you're like, oh, you 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 hear him be like. I only I only pushed him for like a second or two, and the spotter or crew chief, one or the other. Well, that's a second or two too long, apparently. <laughs> I I love it, and I thought it was great. And listen, um, I I might be a little biased because I do have like I mentioned in the chat with the people in there, um, but like I have had an opportunity to talk to and race at least with go-karts at homestead with joey gase and he's a really nice guy and he's so like just level-headed and even keel that i'm surprised it was joey gase that did that um funny thing about the st that story and I'll, I'll say it in here so we had a bunch of of different uh youtubers we had all kind of met up at homestead five years ago jesus it's been so long um but we'd all met up and we were, you know, just going to the go-kart track that Homestead has off of turn one. And so we decided, you know, that, well, let's see, let's just have some fun with it. Well, then Joey Gase comes up with some people. Um, we get maybe, I don't know, it was 12, 14, 16. It was like a good amount of people out there. Uh, and so we, we work with the people that are there and we have like a double file start and restarts and stuff like that. And so I'm starting... Like, if you're looking, because uh, we weren't going the normal, like, counterclockwise. We are going clockwise. So, I was on the second row on the inside. And I know Gase was in front. And there was, I think, Jake Baskinger. And, like, one more person. I don't remember who was on the outside of me. But the person on the outside of me on the start got a good start and went to the outside of the first row. And then I got a good start on them, and I got a run, and I decided to take it four wide down on the bottom. And uh, I think I spun at least one person out doing that. But I got the lead out of it, and I kept the lead for a little while. Uh, what, did I spell Allgaier wrong? I saw someone say no one can spell Allgaier's name right. I swear to God, I thought I spelled it right. Um, but anyway, so for those that wanted to kind of know the story behind that, cause I said that I, I would, um, I would say it, uh, there you go. It was a really, honestly, really funny story. Yeah. I spelled all guy, right? <laughs> don't, don't play on me like that. <laughs> I know I spelled it right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a funny ass story, man. It was a funny ass story. Um, but yeah, the, the, that 
though, is why I'm so surprised. Joey Gase, of all people, uh, would be the one doing that. But I love it, and I want to see more of it. That's that's a second time that uh, that's the second time now we've seen some part of the back of the car be removed and then used as like an extracurricular, and I. Again, just love that stuff. But anyway, this splits the field with the strategy here. Guys like the 7, double zero, 98, 31, they all stay out. Whereas the Gibbs guys and Toyotas, basically the top six or seven that finished, uh, they all pit. And that ends up being the right choice. Chandler Smith uh, and... Eric Almarola with 67 to go are back in the pack. They're outside the top 10 ish somewhere in there, like in the high teens and within seven laps, they are one, two, they have taken the lead and are flying away. Uh, after that though, it was pretty straightforward. There's not really too much to, to look at with the 26 to go. We have Custer pitting. He looked to be having a flat. Uh, he would come back up to finish in the 10th position which, again, I will say, when that happened, I called it. I've seen so many Richmond races, and, and having been there and seen the difference of tires, uh, I just you, you knew that something like that was going to happen. But in the end, it ended up being Chandler Smith getting the victory, and that is, uh, that is the Xfinity race. I, again, I'd give it probably a, I'll give it a seven out of 10. Like I, I enjoyed myself with it. Um, I can't say again that it was a great race, but I thought it was a good race. So I want to know what y'all think in the chat again, one more time, spam it out of 10. What did you think of this race? Uh, you know, zero being or one being the worst race you've ever seen. 10 being God tier. I'm putting mine in here, 7 out of 10. Again, thought it was very solid. Um, I want to see what you guys think. We got a 9, we got an 8, 6.5, 7s, uh, 8, 7. Just keep putting them on in there. 4 out of 10, 6, 5, uh, 8. So we, you know, I'd say we have a lot of people around this range that 5, 6, 7, most I've seen have been between six and seven. Um, you know, we got, a, you know, 8.5. What's up, Tyler? 5.5, uh, which again, I don't think five out of 10 or, you know, is too far out of it. Five out of 10 is a completely plain and average race. Um, you know, I'm seeing, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll extend that. It's more like a, a five to seven is what people are saying. Um, I think this, I, I will say, I think this race will probably be better than tomorrow night's race, uh, but that's about the best that I can say about the cup short track package. And even so, um, I want to say it was Lucas in the chat who had basically said it was the best short track that cup has at the moment, um, at least with this package, because, you know, Bristol, of course, is run with the intermediate package. I'd say that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm looking at you guys talking about what's coming up next. And I believe, what is it? Next week is, what, Martinsville. And then we got Texas and then Talladega. Texas will just be playing stupid crazy. Martinsville will be good except in Cub. And then Talladega's Talladega. So. But yeah, that about covers it. I mean, I don't really know much more to say about it. Pretty stupid straightforward plain race had good moments had fun moments i like fights we should have more fights fights are good uh but i think it's gonna about cover it y'all enjoy your saturday there's plenty of sunlight and and daylight left today go have some fun with your families uh when you're on your way out be sure to like the stream let's get up to 100 likes by the end and uh i guess subscribe if you're new <laughs> <laughs> let's see if we get 75 K as well, but, uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. So until then have a good night, everybody later.